Lord, we hope that you are able to participate in both of our communion service and our giving, in our giving. We can't do none of this without you and without your support. I hope that you meet our challenge of giving an extra $100, amen, as we, as we look to just not improve but to take off some debt that we, um, you know, those COVID pounds that come upon you. <laughs> amen. We got a little COVID debt, a little COVID pounds that came on us during this time. And so we're going to go ahead and, and with your help, we're going to eradicate that and keep moving forward. Amen. Amen. I want you to tag somebody and let them know that it's preaching time at Genesis. Amen. And I want you to turn with me to James. James, the first chapter. And we're going to look at verses 2 through 7. James, the first chapter. Looking through, looking at starting with verse 2 through 7. We know how we do it. We ask that you Please stand for the reading and hearing of God's word. In some way, some form, honor God's word, for in it is power and life. Praise the Lord. James, the first chapter, starting at verse 2, it means as thus, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. For he is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. May the Lord bless the readers and the hearers of his word. Today we're going to speak from the topic, let it work. Let it work. Let it work. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you. Dear God, for today, we thank you, Lord, for how you've already manifested your presence, dear God, through our praise and through our worship. Now, Lord, open the ears of those that need to hear this word from you, dear God. Lord, remove anything that would cause distraction or obstruction of the word so that this seed may fall on fertile soil. So they can understand that they're going through a process and even though it may take a while, they just need to let it work. Let it work because what's coming out of this process is something that their eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, that they could not even imagine. Something big is coming their way. And how Lord help us to just let them know and encourage them on today that if they just wait on you, oh, it will be worth the wait. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Let it work. You may be seated in the sanctuary. The book of James is written by actually James' brother, his half-brother, who is at the time the leader of the Christian church in Jerusalem. The church is doing well and is doing not so good. It's doing well because um, it's growing by le leaps and bounds but it's garnered some unwanted attention by the leadership at the time. Because of, because of their growth, because of their works, they are being persecuted um, because by the leadership because they are threatened at its potential. They're threatened, they're threatened, not because of their resources, not because of their inner influence. Instead, they are threatened by where the church power, the church's power comes from, which is their faith and belief in the power of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. You see, genuine, authentic faith will make folk take notice of you. Who, those who once ignored you and overlooked you uh, will now say, hmm, there's something about you. 
Genuine faith will place a spotlight on you that will intimidate others because of the favor and the blessings that follows it. Faith, the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen is always followed by favor. How do I know? Because the Bible says that when, when, when he is pleased, that faith pleases God. And when God is pleased, he moves. Faith moves God. Faith makes God smile. Faith makes God happy because it's a sign that his children understand not only his acts, but they understand his ways. Meaning that they were not just seeking out the blessings that, that God could do for them, but they were indeed seeking out him, the blesser. And when you walk by faith and not by sight, trusting and believing in God no matter what, you are bound to catch somebody's attention because of the favor that automatically follows you. Favor follows faith. Favor follows faith. And, and you can't help but be blessed when you exercise your faith. The reason why, why folks start hating on you and persecuting you like they were doing to the church is because favor is not fair. Uh, uh, another reason why, uh, 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 this is the reason why you're given so much attention is because people don't think that you deserve what faith and favor gives you. Uh, and now when, while everyone is given a measure of faith, favor, watch this, only comes to those who work their faith. In the chapter, in the same chapter, faith uh, James talks about how faith without works is dead. So for those who are working their faith, you shouldn't be surprised when you start getting the side eye of those who don't work their faith. Because favor follows faith, faith and favor is not fair. God will bless you in the midst of your enemies. God will bless you when it seems like you are unqualified. God will bless you when everybody else is against you because of your faith. God will favor you and don't care what anybody else thinks about it. Your faith permits God's favor. My God, I'm going to say it again. Your faith, when exercised, permits God's favor. So it is because of this power that these new Christians found themselves persecuted by those in power. The Romans and possibly the Orthodox Jewish leadership. And James' message here is one that says that no matter what you do, don't lose your faith. Don't lose your faith. Faith. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how much they talk about you, no matter how much they come against you, no matter how much life seems to have it out for you, don't lose your faith. When trouble comes your way, when you do fall, and yes, you will fall, don't give up. Don't give up on your faith. In fact, James says to them, this, he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, various trials, knowing that this is indeed a test. This is a test. It's a test of your faith. It's a faith test. The things that you're going through right now, the drama the obstacles, the challenges. It's a faith test. Oh, 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 when people are coming against you, when people are doubting you, it's a faith test. This is a test, and it's a test of your faith. 
And over 50 years of life, 27 years of marriage, 22 years of parenting, and 21 years of pastoring, it has taught me that there is no shortage of tests and trials of your faith. Life will test you. Huh, family, school, community, culture, finance, health, pandemics, marriage will test you. I'm not going to dig myself into a hole, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, children will test you. Uh, terrible twos to arrogant adolescents to young adults that just know everything. They will test you. I love them, but they'll test you. Church folk will surely test you. One day they're with you, next day they're not. Oh, they'll test you. Life is full of tests. But James reminds us that they, these tests are not in vain. Knowing that the testing of your faith, it produces something. It produces something. And so he says, count it all joy because God is not trying to destroy you, but he is preparing you by building up your faith. It's a faith test. And the goal is to build up your patient, patience capacity. The goal is to build up your patience capacity. Let's look at the scripture. It says, my, brown, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. What is patience? It is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay trouble, suffering, or suffering without getting angry or upset. I'm going to say it again. It's the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Patience, it speaks to perseverance. It speaks to being steadfast. It speaks to composure. Diligence, diligence, endurance, fortitude, grit, humility, moderation, persistence, poise, restraint. Patience, it speaks to your self-control, your tolerance, your backbone, your calmness, your cons consistency, your cool, your, your, uh, your forbearance, your guts, your heart, your long-suffering, your moxie. It speaks to serenity, starch, stoicism, sufferance, toleration, even temper, intestinal fortitude, and your staying power. It's your level of capacity to deal with pressure. Can you deal with pressure? You really don't know the depth of your character until you see how you react under pressure. It's easy to be kind and gracious when everything is going well, but can you still be that way when life is seemingly going to hell in a handbasket and everybody knows it? James says to count it all joy because the purpose of your test is to build you up, not tear you down. So, so understanding this, he, he, he advises in the next verse, verse 4, he says, even though this faith test is building up your patience, it's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. We all have things that we are waiting for. Promises from God that we know that are ours and are sure to come to pass. And it's so easy to get frustrated waiting for the promises and seeing no progress. It's like with those stimulus checks. We see no progress. They got to go through one thing and another thing and another thing. No stimulus checks. That's why you got to give. So you can get on God's stimulus package and he'll do it right away. So sometimes 
the promises are delayed, are delayed, are delayed. Most times they are delayed. And sometimes it's because we are not prepared. We are simply not ready. And this is why James admonishes us to not be tempted to rush the process, but to let patience have its perfect work. He's perfecting us. Well, I remember when we started constructing this center, the Dr. R. Porter Center, I saw it with the school. Uh, I saw some other building projects I've done. But, 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 but majority of the work uh, uh, that happens in building anything, building anything is, is underground. It's underground. Before they could pour any concrete to lay the foundation, they had to dig deep into the ground to create trenches for the footings. They had to go deep enough into the ground so that the footings would be secure and be able to withstand anything that would challenge the structural integrity of the building. Once they were done with that, they laid out the conduits and the piping and all the cables for the utilities. And it was only once this was done, then they poured the concrete on it. And that's when you had a procession of trucks that came and then they had to, had to sit and that came all over the place and, and, and pour the concrete. And then you had to wait for let the, to let the concrete sit and to harden before it could hold anything that you build on top of it. Now this process seems to take forever because you're just looking at groundwork. Groundwork, groundwork. And can I tell you, that's what's happening right now in your life is groundwork. Groundwork, digging deep, laying down the foundation that's needed so that, that, that God can build up your future on top of you. But you got to make sure that your foundation is stable. Got to make sure that, that things are in the right place, that your footings are stable are stable, and, and it looks like it takes forever from the outside in. Uh, it seems like nothing's happening. If you don't understand what's going on, uh, it may feel like nothing is going on, but that is when God's doing most of his work. The promise seems delayed, but it's not delayed. It's not It's not. It may be delayed, but it's not denied. And what I've learned from that is that you have to let God work deep down on the inside of you before he exposes you to the nation. If it's not, so watch this, if it's not working out, it's mostly, it most likely means that God is working you out. I'm going to say it again. If it's not working out right now, it most likely means that God is working you out. He's working out your character. He's working out your integrity. He's working out your temper. He's working out your lying ways. He's working out your doubts and your fears. He's working out every trait and characteristic that will be an obstacle to your future. You see, we live in a microwave society. But we serve a crockpot God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember the first time when my mom pulled out the crock crockpot. Well, she probably been using it all the time. I remember the first time I noticed that. I smelled something good going on in the crockpot. I go over to the crockpot and my mom says, my mom says, don't you touch that. Don't disturb what's going on. Let it work. <laughs> Let, let it work. Let the meat get tender. Let it work. Well, mom, when's it going to be done? It'll be done in time. It'll be done in time. An hour later, mom, is it done yet? No, it's not done yet. Let it work. Let it work. And isn't that where we are right now? We're like children. We, we, we're so used to putting in the microwave, putting things in the microwave, hitting the button, and after a minute or 30 seconds or a couple of minutes, boom, it's hot. It's ready to go. But that's not how God works. God said, I got it in the crock pot. Uh, 
and I got on the cross, but I'm, I'm letting it be perfected. Because, because you know what whoever, whoever had that crock pot experience, whatever comes out the crock pot is so much better than come, what, what comes out of the microwave. Oh, somebody help me out here. See, your miracle is developed in the process. I'm here, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Your miracle, your, the magic happens in the process. It's because there's a price that you have to pay to be prepared. Something is happening while you are waiting. You're growing. You're developing while you're waiting. And sometimes you can get your blessing too soon. And your blessing then turns into a burden because you're not ready. You're not ready for it. Sometimes God proves his love to us by not giving us what we want at the wrong time. Yes, I promise you that. That is yours. But no, not now. Not at this time. You're not ready. Let it work. Don't touch it. Let it work. Put your hands away from it. Let it work. Go to the other room. Let it work. Let it work. If we got what we wanted, wanted, we wouldn't know what to do with it anyways. We will misuse it, waste it. And this is why you have to trust God's timing. Who is waiting on something and who's getting a little frustrated with God's timing uh, that needs to hear this? I need somebody here to say, to, to write it in the screen. Screen, trust God's timing. Trust God's timing. I'm going to trust his timing for the promises that he has in my life. Let it work. Verse 4 says, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be, watch this, perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Wait a minute. Perfect. If you allow perfect patience huh, to perfect you, then guess what? You're going to come out uh, perfected and complete. Lacking nothing. You just missed your time to shout. You just missed your time to shout. You just missed your time to, to, to dance. You just missed your time to do your touchdown dance right there because if you knew what that meant, you will be, be shouting where you're at. If you knew what that meant, you, you will be dancing where you're at. Oh, but because, because here's what he's trying to tell you. The goal of the perfect work of patience is for you to come out better than what you went in. Oh, for you to come out perfect, oh, complete, lacking nothing. When you went in, you went in as a novice. Oh, you went in not knowing a whole bunch. You went in wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. Uh, but then you let patience work. And now, and now after patience works you over, uh, you come out the expert. Uh, after you allow patience to have its perfect work in you, you come out the master. Uh, when you allow patience to, to work its perfect work, you come out the guru. And the same folk that talked about you, laughed in your face, uh, doubted you, told you not to do it didn't think that you could accomplish it and that God wasn't going to do it for you. They will be the same ones asking you, how did you do it? Can you help me to get where you are? Can you help me get what you got? Can you teach me what you learned? And, 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 and what do you have to say about that? What is your answer to that? You actually said, you got to let it work. You got to let it work. Uh, yeah, you can't touch the crock pot on this one. I can't, I, there's no shortcuts on this thing. You got to go through what you have to go through. You got to lose in order to win. You got to learn how to fall and get back up again. Is there anybody in this place that can say that in my years I've learned to trust God even when I fail, even when I fall? Even when I messed up, I learned that God's not trying to kill me, but he's perfecting me. He's strengthening me. 
He's given me things that I need. He's given me the strength and the mindset that I need so that the I can be what God has desired for me to be so I can handle what God has in store in my future. All I need is somebody out there that can testify that if you wait on the Lord and be of good courage, he will come through and strengthen your heart. He will mount you up with wings as an eagle. You shall walk and not get weary. And then you find yourself running and not failing. But all you gotta do is wait. Wait on the Lord and let him build your patience. Let him perfect the work that's going on in you. What are you trying to do? I try to let you know that you got to let it work. Turn to three people uh, somewhere in your house and say, let it work. Let it work. Let it work. Get your hands off of it. Take your hands off of it and let work. Let the work happen. Let the work happen. Get your hands off the crock pot and start trying to put it in the microwave and let God's work happen in your life. If you let it, I said if you let it, if you let it, let God's work, if you let it, let God's patience work in your life, then guess what? God shed his patience will perfect you. His patience will complete you. His patience will give you all of the desires as a plier. All of your needs, it will heal your body and it will give you whatever you need, whatever you need to accomplish what God has for you in your future. I need to tell somebody, take somebody and let them know, uh, stop being frustrated. Don't let doubt get into your brain. Why? Just let it work. Let it work. And then watch God move. Let it work. Why? Because God's going to complete a thing in your life. And guess what? God never stops what he starts. But God always completes. He always finishes what he starts. He's about to complete that thing. I said he's about to complete that thing in you. And it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. You're going to come out stronger. You're going to come out wiser. You're going to come out through patience. You're going to come out the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. Oh, yes. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. You got to let it work. You got to let God finish it. Can I get a witness out there that if you let him work, he will. He will. He will surprise you. I read somewhere that an elephant is pregnant for almost two years. The animal is so large. I know women, you was like, oh my God, two years. Whew, Father God. But the animal is so large that it takes the long, it takes this long for the elephant on the inside to develop. And watch this, elephants can only birth one elephant at a time. Listen here, in contrast, for you dog lovers, dogs huh, are pregnant for only 63 days. After two to three months, they are able to have five to eight puppies, a litter of puppies, right? Now, now imagine the conversation between the dog and the elephant. 
The dog says, I don't think you're, you're pregnant at all. You don't even look like it. You was rotund before. You rotund right now. I can't see it. Huh. And over that two year period, the dog goes and gets knocked up and, and, and over and over again and comes back with 30 puppies. 30 puppies. And comes back with her litter bragging to the elephant about her puppies. But the elephant says, that's okay. Because what I'm carrying is not puppies. Somebody's gonna get that right there. But I'm carrying something big and unusual. I'm birthing an elephant. And I came here today to stop by and let you know that what you're carrying is not puppies. You ain't carrying something small. You ain't carrying something kind. But you're carrying something unusual. Uh, what you are carrying is something big. Uh, it's something that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Don't you get discouraged because it's taking you so long to birth out your dream. Don't you get you discouraged uh, because uh, it's taking you so long uh, to make things happen. It just means uh, that it's going to be what you are birthing is bigger and better than what you think. These are not puppies. You're about to birth an elephant. Somebody say, get ready. Get ready. I'm birthing something big in 2021. You're about to give birth to something big, uh, elephant-like, gigantic. Uh, so you're about to give birth to something that people cannot ignore. And the reason is taking longer and more work than you thought is because the blessing that is being perfected through patience is going to be perfect. It's going to be complete and it's going to lack nothing. It will lack nothing. Let me drop hold of that right there. It will lack nothing. What you're about to give birth to shall lack nothing, but it shall have everything that you need, everything that you desire, everything that you will promise. It will lack nothing, but it shall come out complete and perfect. Somebody say bigger. Somebody say greater. Somebody say extraordinary. That's what God is doing in your life. Something extraordinary. Something big. Something great. Something uncommon. It's elephant big. And all you gotta do is let it work. Let him work. Let him work it out in your family. Let him work it out in your church. Let him work it out in your school. Let him work it out in your money. Let him work it out in your body. Let him work. Let him work. Let him work. work. And watch him do just what he said. He said. He said he's going to do. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. I've seen him work it out. I've seen him giving me things I could not see. He said, uh, you you wait to court. You're not going to get puppies, but you're going to get elephants. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm starting to feel good right now. Maybe it's my church. I'm starting to feel good right now. But I'm here to let you know that God 
will do just what he said he said he will make your enemy your footstool he will prepare a table in front of them yes he will yes he will can I get up with it can I get a witness yes he will Woo. yes he will Woo. yes he will all you gotta do is let him work let him work it out let him work let him make it happen let patience work is perfect work and watch God build you up Watch God make a way. Watch God open doors. Watch God heal your body. Woo! Last thing. Last thing. I have to give you a disclaimer. And the disclaimer is this. After verse 4, it goes to verse 5. And he says, here's the things you have to watch out now for. You can't allow doubt to disrupt the process. Whatever you want, he cites wisdom. He says, if you ask for wisdom, I'm going to give it to you. I'll give it to you freely, abundantly. Parents, if you want it, I'll give it to you. But don't you ask doubting. <laughs> because your doubt will disrupt the process. The patience process. Huh? So, so here's the thing. It says doubt leads to double-mindedness. And, and I have a sense that this is where many of us have struggled because we want to believe God. We, we truly do. We want to believe God, but then our eyes betray what we believe. And so we get caught up with what we see and start doubting God. And even while we're praying, watch this, even while we're believing, even while we're asking God for the thing that we, we most desire, we can have doubt creep in. And it says here, for any man or woman that allows doubt to creep in, warning, for your doubt will cause you to be double-minded and unstable in your ways. And this is where I want to leave off at. At the risk of, of messing up a good time and at celebration, I want to challenge your doubt. I want to challenge you in your faith to not allow doubt to disrupt the process so that you will not become double-minded. Will he do it? I know he'll do it. Will he work it out? I know he'll work it out and unstable in your ways. Believe, no matter what. And when it seems like it's not working, know in your heart of hearts, God is working. He's just working underground. <laughs> He's setting up the footings. He's laying down conduit and and everything that you need, the foundation, he's building you up. You can't see it, but just because you don't see nothing springing up right now don't mean nothing. It don't mean he ain't working. In fact, God does his best work underground and in the background. And then the next thing you know, you start getting calls and stuff. You start seeing things pop up. After the cement dries, then you start seeing uh, um, um, the, 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 the railings going up and 
start seeing the two by fours jumping on the cement bricks and, and, and the structure will come on. And the reason why the structure can come on is because God has built you up so solid that you can hold what, the future that he's building for you. But he can't do it when you're double-minded and when you're doubtful. So, so I'm, I'm, here's, here's the test. Through 2021, don't try to put what's in the crock pot in the microwave. Keep your hands off it. Let it work. <laughs> no matter how good it smells, don't jump in it. Let it work. If you don't see nothing happening, it's all right. Let it work. And when you let him work, you will come out perfect, complete, lacking nothing. And if you believe that, I want you to give God a praise right now. Come on. Praise him. Praise him. On the internet, praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah.